Get a five-minute business book review, pivotal moments with failed businesses, and hear an interview with a business disruptor who will share their $10,000 mistake. This is the Forward Motion Business Show with Professor Ken and Professor Paul A. Marino. Hit new heights. Start with Forward Motion. Okay. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Forward Motion Business Show. I'm Professor Ken. And I'm Professor Paul Marino. And here we are today. I think this is, believe it or not, uh, episode number 20. So we are celebrating our 20th episode. So, um, and today we have, it's a Paula Marcello, right? Paula Marcella. Marcella. From the Lady Baker. Yes, Lady Baker. In Pembroke Park. So welcome. So great to have you here. Thank you. It's an honor for me. Yes. I mean, we've been talking about uh, all the great things that uh, she does and the shop provides and we'll we'll get into that a little bit uh, as well so um, hey Paul what we'll do today is I want to focus on a couple of things one I like to talk about how we are driving um, business through online marketplaces and and how we connect to the consumer and we'll talk about how that plays a role in some of the things that that you do as well Mm -hmm. okay and then I, I do want to focus on the um, Peloton oh, sure. and talk about the, uh, I guess, the amazing growth of Peloton and then the amazing downsizing yeah. of Peloton in a, ma- in a matter of a couple of uh, months, I guess. And then, of course, we want to learn more about Lady Baker and, and talk about the growth and, and your journey there uh, in, in growing as well. Okay. Perfect. So why don't we start? I think we started off with the Peloton story. I'm really fascinated by this from a business point of view. So Paula, what we, what we do every show is we try to take a, a business lesson and we try to understand it a little bit so we can all learn from what happened, whether it was positive or negative and, and what we can do to learn from that. So there's a lot of things out there on Peloton right now. Obviously, if you don't know the product, it's a very um, high-end, high-end bike, and uh, it's a high-end bike that you would you have to buy. I think it's like two thousand dollars, right? And there's a subscription that you have to get and personalize it and all that. And I, I think it was growing pretty rapidly before COVID, and then oh, of course the stock was a high flyer. Yeah, and then of course COVID COVID hit. And everybody needed to stay inside, so everyone bought one of these, one of these bikes. And then the company goes out because they're growing really rapidly, right? Mm-hmm. They hire more employees. They make a big capital investment in this whole new facility. Mm-hmm. Um, they do all that, and then of course, thank goodness, uh, COVID leaves us or is leaving us. Mm-hmm. And what do we do? We go back to our normal lives, hopefully. And that means we want to go back to the gyms and we don't, we're not stuck at home with a $2,000 bike and a subscription. So I just think it's fascinating. And some of the things that I'd like to talk about is what lessons do you think uh, can we talk about and, and what can we learn from that whole thing, Paul? Well, I, I think the first thing that we have to learn is that we, as human beings, are social animals. Yeah. I mean, the rise of Peloton was because people were stuck in their home. They were mm-hmm. bored. Uh, they figured they were they were probably eating too much, not your stuff, <laughs> but they were probably eating too much. They got a little heavy, and they said, "Oh, I can I can exercise, and I can shed some of this weight, and I can you know uh, pass the time by doing mm-hmm. this." But what they what they forgot to factor into their formula was that people are basically social animals. They want that interaction. So when Mm -hmm. COVID COVID left, people wanted to go back out. People wanted to go back to the gym. Yeah, bring the mic closer so we can hear you better. Okay. So, um, so Paolo, you know, one thing, one concept there is we talk about, and and you do a lot of reading on it, they talk about supply and demand and and forecasting and and things like that. And we had a brief conversation before we started here. Mm So imagine if you, in your business, imagine, I, I would assume, what's your biggest holiday? Valentine's. Valentine's Day, right? So in their case, they basically made their growth pattern based on the pandemic, right? which it, it, we hoped or we knew that would end someday, right? And here we are at, at the end. So I guess in your case, what would you, I mean, obviously your, I don't know what your revenue is. You don't have to share any numbers, but I would imagine it's 10X or 20X than your normal day. So if you took that Valentine's Day 
and you assume that that would be your normal volume, you know, every week of the year, you probably would have 50 shops by now. And then what do you do after Valentine's Day, right? Yeah, well, we're in Florida. We all know that summer in Florida, we don't have a lot of people. Right. So I'm preparing for June, July, and August that I know a lot of people are going to be traveling. Well, this year, we don't know because no, don't this year so. is yeah, maybe it's different. Yeah. Right. But normally, yeah. from May to August are very low season for us. So what I... I'm planning, I'm planning right now is what I'm going to do. The revenue is not going to be there. Right. So I have to have options during this time of the year. If I assume that I'm going to sell the same as I sold on Valentine's, oh, my God, I would be home right now. Right. <laughs> right. Well, be before we get into that, why don't you tell our listeners exactly you know, I, I, I stumbled upon Lady Baker by accident. A friend of mine said, you know, meet me in the mall. And I, I said, okay, where do you she, she says, you got to try this place, Lady Baker. Mm -hmm. And I was blown away. I was uh, blown thank away. You, thank so you. tell us, what exactly is Lady Baker? Well, uh, a little bit about my background. Okay. I used to work on the finance department of a chemical company for 15 years. Oh, boy. Yeah, there's <laughs> nothing to do. I had no idea about kitchen. So my life was numbers at that time. Um, but my heart was not there. Right. And uh, I used to work with my family, my parents, my, my dad, actually, and my sister. And we sold the company in 2011 so we all retired i would say you're too young for that. <laughs> yeah at that moment uh and i decided after even though i like to work with numbers mm -hmm. my heart was not there right right it was easy was it your passion it wasn't you know when you don't wake up early happy that's because you're italian <laughs> <laughs> i need that you i need, need that, that. So I decided if I go back to work, because my kids were, I had two child at the time. So I said, I'm going to stay home for a while. And if I decide to go back to work, mm -hmm. I got to put all my heart into it. Yeah. Otherwise, I would stay home and watch Netflix. Right. Oh, boy. That, right. That would be a tragedy. <laughs> <laughs> once, <laughs> once you taste their bakery goods, that would be a tragedy. That's, that's true. So I decided when I found out that bread was my passion, and it was later on the day. I was 40 something years old at the time. And I said, you know what? I love this. I'm gonna do something with this. And when I realized I already had a bakery, it was just going step by step. When I realized I had a bakery and it was growing, growing, growing. And I love what I do. I love each day. I love more. Yeah. Well, I, get, I get it. Italians <laughs> and bread. I mean, it's like drugs for us. <laughs> Dipping it in the gravy is like drugs. And actually, bread for me always had a different meaning because my dad, he's a chemical engineer and he right. used to bake breads for us just for the family, for fun, for hobby. Mm -hmm. And he used to give to us bread. And I have this image in my head that he's giving me the bread with a tablecloth that he just baked. And that means love. That, right, yeah, that's yeah. not about the bread. Right. That's about what, you, what are you receiving from him, right. what he's giving to you. And that was amazing. So bread for me has this meaning, what I'm doing for this person. Right. Can I give this person a great moment? And now, I walked in your shop, which is a beautiful shop. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank a beautiful you. Shop Thank you. Filled with lovely, accommodating people. And I first thing I saw is on the wall, you had several loaves of bread and not typical um, American bread. They were the kind of breads that I remember as a young boy that my grandmother baked. Mm -hmm. The big Italian, yeah. you know, round breads. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, when I moved to US, I was devastated because I couldn't find a good bread to eat. I say, how come? I live in US where I can buy a fish from Tokyo right. from the night before right. and I can't find a good bread to eat. I can find a, an, at least a good one doesn't don't need to be like the exceptional one, but a good one. You can't, you can't find. Yeah, it's I said, no, it's it's insane. So I start baking. So how many different breads do you have on Ooh. a given day? I would say 30, 40. Wow. 
Yeah. Wow. Croissants and, and loaves of bread. And do you yeah. do you do you change the variety or is it the same? You have like a set meat, and then you change it? I do have a set. Yeah. That I have every day. For example, if I don't have an olive sourdough, if I don't have the... we love that at home, by the way. <laughs> well, the I have the sourdough; it's good. Die for. <laughs> yeah, very good. thank you. <laughs> and I always have the multigrain olive, San Francisco, which are the which are the the plain ones, and and some uh, croissants like guava and cheese, almond, my best seller. Yes. Uh, oh, I thought it would be the Nutella. The no, Nutella is, is that amazing. should be illegal. Yeah. <laughs> that was illegal. No, the you need a Peloton <laughs> once you have one of those. Yeah. <laughs> or you can go out and run. You can go out and run. Well, if they're still be in business in the next two years, yeah. we'll see. Yeah, no, Almond is my best seller. But I love to do something different. Like last week, I came up with this new pistachio croissant. And yeah. I'm so excited about it. Oh, wow. and, I can't wait to have it in the store. To and it was, uh, it was uh, National Pistachio Day last week. Or the week oh, before. really? Yeah. It, I didn't it, know it, that. Yes, it was. It was National it was Pistachio National Day. Pistachio. So, And the reason why I know that is because I do I do social media stuff. And, and we were looking for different days. You know, you can find different days yeah. to celebrate on calendars and stuff. And we uh -huh. celebrated National Pistachio Day day because i work with an italian company we have mm. biscotti at the cantusini mm. and oh, we have I love a biscotti. Do you and, like biscotti and i can make it i've made once but it's yeah. not on my my so day. so we have a pistachio one so we celebrated uh national pistachio. i didn't know that yeah yeah so yeah. I'll, I'll send you a list of different holidays because you got to look for these type yeah, of holidays yeah, that and then in terms of uh this company uh manzo food sales they actually bring in uh, a really good olive oil it used to be the one they sold or they presented at macaroni grill the mm -hmm. one that you dip the bread in. Oh, mm -hmm. I love doing that with the balsamic. So, oh, my so God. we take we take your bread and we dip it into that olive oil. Oh, it's that's like, amazing! It's heaven, yeah. I'll, I'll make sure we get you a, a uh, bottle, a oh, bottle or two. So just wrapping up this Peloton thought, mm -hmm. and, and you see how it all ties together. And I think you stated it best. You cannot build your business on on your seasonality or your peak. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, it wouldn't make sense for you as a, as a, you know, a bake shop. It wouldn't make sense. It shouldn't have made sense for Peloton. Well, you have to know your customers. Well, yeah. And then you, that's exactly right. And then how do you, don't you, you think about the limitation of it though. I mean, listen, everybody eats bread. Mm -hmm. So you can actually literally think the entire South Florida population mm -hmm. could be your customer. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, that's not unrealistic. Mm -hmm. Everybody eats bread for those that maybe there's a, you know, a percentage that don't. But then the question is, as a marketer, how many people are going to afford a two thousand dollar bike and spend the fifty dollars a month on the app? to get the bike. And then, as you mentioned, Paul, you have to personalize it to yourself. Yeah. So I can't even jump on my wife's bike if I wanted to. I guess I could if I customize it or something like that. So the way I see it is that the market is, is very limited, right? It's finite. There's only X amount of people that would be able to buy that product. So when, mm -hmm. when they, you had all these new customers coming in because of COVID, someone that normally probably wouldn't buy one of these things, and then all of a sudden now they're, they're leaving you. So it was just a, an interesting scenario and in how one of the lessons I think we can take from that is you don't build the business off of your seasonality. Of course not. Your seasonality has to be the, you know, your profits. That's the, you, well, you take the profits from that and go on to vacation with that seasonality. Yeah, you don't yeah. build a business on it. Though. I, I think they had another issue that they couldn't address. You see, the Peloton bike is a hidden asset. So I buy it. It's in my house. So the people who sold it to me have very little interaction with me once I have their product. So they don't know if I love it. They don't know if I hate it. They don't know what I like about it or what I don't like about it. I had a very interesting uh, uh, experience in, in, your, uh, in your bakery. Um, I went in and I had a quiche. If anybody goes there, have the quiche. The quiche. Is well, it sounds like we need to try a little bit of everything, <laughs> though. So More I'm, than happy to. Yeah, yes, exactly. I'm having the quiche. And, you know, I'm ordering different stuff, some stuff I want to eat there, some stuff I want to take mm -hmm. home. And, and and the young lady comes up to me and I says, well, do you have coffee? She says, oh, yeah, we have several different coffees. What would you like? So I ordered a cup of coffee. But she came to my table no less than three or four times and said, how's the quiche? Is it warm enough for you? Do you like it? Mm -hmm. How's the coffee? Can I get you anything? Mm -hmm. So she was getting instant feedback from everything I liked. 
And then I said to her, you know, this stuff is great. I'd like to take some home to my family. Mm -hmm. What would you like? What can I make for you? You know, can I slice the bread for you? Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of interaction yeah. about mm -hmm. what I liked and what I didn't like, because you make two different kinds of quiche. You had a vegetable and then you had a, a, yeah. a cheese yes. type. So you have a, a lot of different products, but the feedback was instantaneous. Right. Mm -hmm. And when I called back the, the next day or, or this week to ask her to be on the show, mm -hmm. The young lady says, oh, I remember you. You're the professor who came in. <laughs> right. Peloton didn't have that. They sold the bike. They installed it. And they never talked and to anyone again. Yeah. yeah. And that's important. And it's so great that you do that, you know, as, as a local business owner. And uh, obviously, there's some training involved there, I would imagine, yeah. some coaching and, and things of that nature, which is great. That As an owner, that you should be proud of your team because that's what you want them to do, right? <laughs> so that's great. And, and I think you're right, Paul. The key right now, too, and, and this sort of moves us into the next part of our conversation, which is the uh, the new marketing uh, that we have now. And, and I use new marketing meaning so I'm, I've been marketing for 30, 30 years, mostly consumer products, all kinds of different things. And we used to call it traditional marketing. Traditional marketing, let's say, used to be your postcards and maybe mm -hmm. your flyers or your TV, your radios. And nowadays, of course, everything is online and everything mm -hmm. is digital. You really, it's hard to have a successful business if you're not, not there. Not there, exactly. And the one thing that's interesting that you mentioned about the knowing what the customer wants, getting that instant feedback. Right. We're starting to see that online now as well. So um, there's something that's called omni-channel marketing and it's finding the path to purchase, how a consumer comes in and says, oh, like we'll, we'll use your shop and I don't know exactly the ins and outs, but mm -hmm. if I had to think about the path to purchase is if you, you're walking by, you may smell the, the, bread the bread and say, oh, that's pretty good. And then go in, Let, assuming you've never been there before. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you we follow you online and mm -hmm. you announce this new pistachio mm -hmm. and croissant or bread coming out. And say, oh, that's pretty good. I got to go check that out. And you put <laughs> limited time only mm -hmm. this weekend and things like that. Or maybe someone refers someone to you. And so now the business owner, the marketer has to know how you got to me and how I can get to you and keep you informed and, and things like that. that's the new way we need to market today. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what happened to me. I walked by that shop and I saw that <laughs> bread in the window and I was a goner. I was a dead duck because me and bread, Italians and bread, forget I know. it. It's fatal. Then you walk in and she has this glass case there and chocolate chip cookies muffins croissants yeah. i mean and then you look up on a wall and there's all these breads there i mean it, it's sensory overload yeah i my my idea was to create a business where i can have my customers coming in and feeling at home mm. or take my customer to another to a new experience for example if you go there, you remind it reminded you your grandmother, right? Yes. I get that so much. You have no idea how many people come in and tell me, "Oh, Paula, I remind my grandmother. I remind my mom. Mm. Oh, I I, f I feel that I'm in Italy. I yeah. feel that I'm in France." Yeah. And that's the idea. If you can mm. take someone from this part here, where you are in Pembroke Pines, and take them. Or to the childhood, oh, or yeah. to uh, yeah. another place, or this memories come. It's amazing. It is, and you know, and that's and that's interesting too, because the concept that we, we need to practice now, it's the experience, right? Mm -hmm. It's the experience. So think about Disney. What is Disney market? What does Disney sell? The experience. Mm -hmm. they, they sell the experience. Yeah. So if you remember way back when, when Starbucks was this big up and coming, you know, store and everyone needed to go to Starbucks and things like that. The coffee is horrible, by the way. I'm not mm -hmm. a Starbucks drinker. But what did they sell? What did they market? They marketed the experience. experience. And that's the connection. So that's so valuable. Oh, she brought me right back to my childhood. I agree mm -hmm. with you. There were so many times that the bread that I bought was subpar. It's mm -hmm. mushy. It's mm -hmm. not crunchy. It's fatty. It's mm -hmm. doughy. It's yuck. Mm -hmm. Her bread is my grandmother's. <laughs> it's, it's my amazing. grandmother's. I mean, I'm yeah. telling you, uh, it's 
the crust is, I mean, the crust is crust. <laughs> All right. It tastes good. And, and my goal when I uh, have my employees with me and I train them is I, I always tell them, you have to go to all the tables and talk to all the customers they because do. we can change the experience. Yeah. yeah. If you got a vegetable quiche and it was cold, well, that's they not asked a me. good... No, yeah. they asked me, is it warm enough for you? She yeah. came over and asked me. Because if it's not, we're going to make it. Or if you don't like, I don't mind. I'll change the bread for you. I'll give you another one because my idea is to give you an experience. It's not about the bread. Yeah. And that's it so was great. That's so important. So tell us, uh, give us a little insight on what you do as as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, and and some of the innovation, and maybe how you market, and how do you get that experience across to people? What what do you do on a daily basis, a weekly basis, in terms of marketing? For example, uh, Instagram for me is the most uh, valuable one. I I do a lot of Instagram promotions. Mm and Q&A, and a lot of things. I have almost 10,000 followers right now. That's very respectful. Yeah, right? and, and it's incredible. Everything that we put on Instagram, two days later, or the next day, sometimes the same day, I have people there asking for what I just posted. And uh, last week, or two weeks ago, we asked, what would you like to see at Lady Baker that we don't have right now? And we got a list of things. Wow. And I'm doing every week, I'm doing something different for them. And then I put the what they ask for and what I'm doing. Wow, that's and, great. And the person that asks for that, I normally invite to go to the, the store and I'll give the, the product for oh, them. That's uh, see, that's a great. Yeah. That's yeah, that's and great. I post that on Instagram. Yeah. Now, so, you do takeout as well? Hmm? You do takeout? Yeah. So someone could call up and of say, course. make me a dozen... Yeah, croissants yeah. or make me a dozen cupcakes yeah. or yeah oh, last cool. week i sent to a college a college i think it was a college here miami date college mm -hmm. uh 100 croissants oh wow and smaller size whatever you want the see way i you told want. you we should have gone to that meeting you know paul and i <laughs> <laughs> paul and i teach at miami <laughs> Dade college yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh but we never go, we go to the meetings. we don't go to meetings oh. but now i'm gonna if she does the chocolate chip cookies, I'll go. Right. I'm going to tell For, my team if she does the chocolate chip cookies, I I'll think go. that's how they should start their their invitation. Uh, <laughs> yes, we'll have Lady Baker yes. supplying, the, <laughs> supplying the chocolate chip. Please make sure you come to the meeting. Absolutely. I'm, I'm in. I'm in. That's <laughs> nice. So, of course, I can make... Like yesterday, someone called and said, Hey, do you make cheese quiche? I said... I'll make it for you if I have all the cheese that you want. If I have all the supplies that I need, right. I'll make it for you. Yeah. And 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 so you mentioned the Instagram thing. Is that really the main platform that yeah, you use? For me, yes. And what about the um, the other the other one out there, TikTok? Have you explored on the yes, TikTok? Yes, we platform? have some. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so sure. Instagram is your is your main, main platform. One. So that's how you launch a new product, how you introduce a new Everything. product. And you do the, you have this this great interaction where you're not only sharing the experience, but you're pulling information from them. So you're connecting to them yeah. on a regular basis. Yeah. What about um, on on your website, I guess? Do you drive traffic to your website too? Where is that? Yeah. Sit? The thing is, we're changing the website at mm -hmm. this moment. Mm -hmm. uh, because before, I used to sell products through the website. Right. Uh, I'm still doing that, but we're changing the way we're going to do that. So I'm not really into the website at this moment, right. but in a few weeks, we're going to be back on you the get web. It back yeah. Online. Yeah. So do you ship, Paul mentioned takeout, but do you ship cross country? Do you no, can't, you can't do that no because it got to be fresh. Yeah, yeah, I don't think it would. It's, it's not the same. Yeah. I won't give the experience. if I. Well, I have some customers that buy the products and send to their kids in Los Angeles. I said, oh my God, Los Angeles, you have so many bakeries over there. You don't have to buy here and ship to them. I said, no, they want your bread. So. Oh, I don't know about that because okay. I, during uh, during COVID, there is a, uh, I can't think, I don't know if it's Brooklyn Bagel, but there's a bagel company online mm -hmm. and they would ship you bagels from their bagel shop because they say, you know, they say New York bagels are the best bagels. Maybe it's the water, maybe it's the air, who knows mm -hmm. what it is. Some of it is true. There's a couple of good bagel places down here yeah. but they opened up this online shop and they have they sold subscriptions so every mm -hmm. month you can get you know your Excellent. dozen bagels sent to that and stuff like that so there are there are customers that are that are people all over the world if you have this experience mm -hmm. and i get shipped to california 
guess what? I'm going to try to figure out a way to bring your product back <laughs> with me because that's what you're attaching to. You're, you're attaching the experience to that individual and you can't, yeah. you can't replicate that. So no. that's really, that's really great. Yeah. So tell us about some of the, uh, you mentioned some of the flavors and different things like that. What other innovations do you try to try to do on a regular basis? What I do there, I think the most important thing is the way I make my breads. All my breads are sourdough, which is the natural fermentation. All the breads, long process, three day process. Wow. Yeah, it's a long, long process. That's why you don't find good sourdoughs around here because no one wants to wait three days to sell the bread. You have to have cash right. to do that because right. it's cash flow. But I don't care. I want to do the best bread possible. So my breads are three days, uh, fermenting three days, long process, a lot of flavor, a lot of aromas in it. Uh, and that's something unique here. You don't find. Right. So everything... All the breads that I make over there, they're all sourdough, except from hala, except from the hala. Right. The hala is not sourdough, but the rest, they're all sourdough. So I try to have, and sourdough also is very good for your health. Yeah, they Be say it's the best bread you can eat is sourdough. It is because it's a natural bacteria that we have there. Mm. And this natural, natural bacteria will break the gluten before you digest due to the long process. So you won't feel bloated. So it's a very good uh, bread for you. Oh, I didn't realize that. Well, I feel bloated because I eat so much I, of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, everything you eat, you know, you eat too much of uh, too many apples, and you're not going to feel too good. Right? Exactly. So it's all it's exactly. all moderation. Yeah. So I didn't realize that it has that health component. Do you yeah. do you market that at all? Do you tell people? Is it hard to explain that to someone? You know what? Last week I was talking to my daughter about. She said, "Mom, you have to tell everyone about this." I said. Yeah, you know, for me, it's so natural. basic yeah. and natural that I forget about that. But, yeah, I have to do that more, and I'm going to do it. I'm yeah, do I it. only eat sourdough. Yeah, That's sourdough is, is the best. Yeah. It's the best possible. Yeah. And if you talk about the loaves that I sell, uh, for example, San Francisco is, is flour, water, and salt only. There right. is nothing. There is no fat. There is no chemicals. There is nothing in it. There's no sugar. So it's it's amazing. Oh, I remember when my grandmother used to bake. She would send me to go out and buy the yeast for her. Mm -hmm. Now, not the powdered yeast, the real block of yeast. Right. Mm -hmm. Then she would make the the dough, and then, like you said, she would let it sit overnight mm -hmm. till it rose, and then she would put it in the oven. Exactly what you're doing. You're taking yeah. me back to my childhood. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's the idea. Well, that's because you you have the, the you you expressed it earlier. It's the love and you try you try right the passion that you're trying to get. Passion, passionate people. And so you're not rushing. You're not r rushing the product. You're definitely going for quality over quantity. Oh yeah, right? and that's important. Yeah. And I think that that's what separates any any business from another business. If you can find quality over over quantity, and I'm sure you can probably. So 10 times the amount that you sell now, if you figured out a way to speed up the process, oh, yeah. change the process, and, but then you wouldn't be, you wouldn't be as successful as you are because then you become like everybody else and you're not yeah. separating yourself. Yeah. Right? Because if you want a cheap croissant, if you want something that is fast, go to Costco. Right. You have 12 croissants for $4 yeah, and right. that's it. <laughs> So, no, this is not what I want. I want to have the best possible and something that it's good for you. For example, before we used to make some croissants with coloring. Now I'm not using coloring anymore. So everything that is that I don't want to give to my kids, I'm not putting in my breads. That's great. So, and, and that's another good thing you should tell everyone. That's another good yeah. point. You know, you mentioned all these different things. It, it makes you want to, you know, visit the shop and, and you, you get that better experience. So it's not just yeah. a love. It's not just a passion. There are other elements to it that you compete. You know, we have you have that differentiation that you can't compete with yeah. anybody. How far do you, did you do it? Ever do a survey of how far people would drive to you? You know, you have any idea? I, I have customers that come from Palm Beach. I have customers wow. that come from Kendall. Every wow. I have one that comes every Thursday for baguettes. Every Thursday, he drives one hour and 30 minutes to get the baguettes. 
I, I tell them, I tell him all the time, I say, are you really coming for the baguettes? <laughs> I said, yes. Oh, my God. I, I have to give you something else because I'm so honored right. to have someone driving one hour and a half to get a baguette. I, I'm from Miami Lakes. And the moment I told my wife about the key, she said, <laughs> when are you taking me? <laughs> you have to it's take It's a her. great place to go for breakfast. You have yeah. seating outside. Yeah. It's lovely. I have yeah. seating inside. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful place to go for breakfast and yeah. have a quiche and a piece of bread. And, and you're talking about the quiche. The quiche, for example, is something that we, when I was thinking about if we should do quiche or not, how we're going to do something different. So what I did, I opened a croissant dough and I put the quiche inside. So it's different. Yeah. That's the, it's young, flaky. the young lady who gave me my, brought me my heated uh, quiche said to me, wait until you taste the crust. And I said, well, what's so special? About this? She said, it's actually croissant crust. Oh, yeah, that's it is. even got to be better. Oh, it, it was is. to die for. <laughs> so I always try to do something different. Uh, if mm -hmm. you want to have a quiche, our quiche is going to be different. Yeah. If you want to have a good uh, slice of bread, ours is going to be different. Yeah. And I always think what is the best ingredient possible to put in this bread. And I buy it. Even today, the supplier called me and said, Paula, are you really going to keep buying this butter for your croissant? You're the only one buying. I said, I don't care. I don't care. Even if I have to charge more for the croissant, but if it's the best croissant, I don't care. Right. That's great. I, did you have, are you, were you having any supply issues during the, during the pandemic when we opened up? Because there's a lot of different supply issues out there now. Well, during pandemic, pandemic for me was a different story. Yeah. Uh, I opened the, my first store in January of 2020. Wow. And in March, we had to close. Yeah, that's horrible. Yeah. You were right next to, um, you were right on the main track, weren't you? I was, uh, I was in the street. same street. I was in the same street that I was right, that I am right now. I was uh, sharing a space with a cupcake place. Mm. That's where I started. I saw you next to um, what's that big restaurant right on the main cheesecake. Street? You were next to cheesecake. Yes. that's when I first saw your store. Yeah, yeah, that was my second store. I would say okay. because I started with a, a cupcake place in January of 2020, mm -hmm. and in March I had to close because pandemic. Right. But I never stopped. I never stopped. When we realized that we had to close, so. We have no nothing to do. We have to close. So what I'm going to do? Everybody's going to continue to eat. So I increase my deliveries. And I, I didn't know at that time if we were going to have flour to buy or not. Right. So I called my supplier and I said, how many bags of flour can I buy? And I remember at that time I was, I was using like two bags per week. And he said, Paul, I have 40 bags in my, uh, show, my warehouse right now. Do you want? I said, yes. My husband said, are you crazy? What are you going to do with 30 bags of flour? I, said, I don't care. I'm going to buy it. Worst case scenario, I'm going to start donating bread or I'm going to start uh, trying my new recipes. Right. And that's what I did. I increased the, the deliveries and I started donating. When I saw all the hospitals, all the nurses, everyone right. working so much, I said, I'm going to bake breads for them. So I started baking that's breads for wonderful. them. Yeah. I never stopped. I never stayed home during all the whole pandemic. I was talking to my daughter two days ago and she said, mom, you never stayed home. I said, never, not one day. Right. That's, and that's yeah. exciting. So yeah. what would you say if you had to share your, um, your learnings from getting through COVID week, Paul and I just had a conversation a couple of weeks about that at the show. Now that we're, I, I'm going to say it right. That we're out of COVID, you know, it seems that mm -hmm. way. Um, what lesson could you share with other entrepreneurs and, and about going through that crisis? We're going to call it a crisis, right? Unexpected crisis. You need to be open and you need to have another plan. <laughs> mm. Okay, if something happened and you're going to turn right, but the on the right side is not okay, you have to turn left. You have no option. So how are you going to do that? So you have to stay open and think about what are the options? Yeah. What can I do? And don't get stuck to something that you get in mind. For example, if I had in mind that I was not going to do deliveries anymore at that time, I would be dead by now. Yeah. And I said, no, I have to go back to deliveries. I have to go back to do what I was doing and I'm going to increase and I'm going to make it different right now. So it's an opportunity. 
I yeah. always see it as an opportunity. That's yeah. great. Well, I can tell you, Paul and I are very uh, grateful that you didn't give up <laughs> and you didn't stop because we are definitely oh, appreciative. I'm, I'm a fan. So, Paula, <laughs> our, our listeners, how do they find you? Well, I'm, I'm at the Pembroke Gardens Mall, the one that is open. That's the one off of 75. Yes, yeah. off 75. Uh, they have Cheesecake Factory over there. Yes. Yeah. Um, two stores down. They have Cheesecake, they have Z Gallery, and then we're just there. Okay. So we're open from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. every single day. That's great. That's and good. your website yeah. is? www.ladybaker.us. And your Instagram handle is what? At Lady Baker USA. Oh, Lady wonderful. Baker, so we gotta I yeah. gotta hit you up and uh, follow you there and keep an eye yes, on things. Please, wonderful. please. And if someone wants to call in an order, how do they do it? Just call us. It's 954-610-6370. Okay. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, we'll be we'll be uh, on a list real soon. We'll swing by, Paul. You and I. Oh, yeah. it's on my list. Don't <laughs> and, if, and next time you take an order from the college, make sure that we say, "Listen, we <laughs> spoke." Let you know. <laughs> well, yeah, you say we spoke to a couple of professors. They said they would have gone if you would have put in the subject matter line. Uh, you know, by the way, we're being created by Lady Baker. <laughs> right. That exactly. would have, that would have helped us. That'd exactly. be amazing. I'll send the quiche next time. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. Chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> and chocolate chip cookies. Well, it's so nice to meet you. Thank you for spending oh, a few you. minutes with us and tell, pleasure, telling us about your business. And uh, Paul, I guess uh, I guess we're hungry now, right? Wow. <laughs> it, it, it's about. This was a terrible interview for me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they say the Italians. There's a saying at the out: Italians don't eat to live. They live to they eat. They live to eat. Isn't that yeah. true? Yeah. Well, now we know what we're going to be doing. In the, I'm in so the glad very... I stumbled by. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's it's so great that you joined us, and we really oh, appreciate the time. You. And uh, hopefully we'll have you back as you continue yeah, to whenever. grow and, and share yes. your story. I'm honored. I'm honored. Well, thank, you. thank you so much. Well, thank you. Pleasure. So we'll, we'll call this a uh, a very nice, um, healthy show, right? Uh, right. Talking about, so we want to thank you, Might everyone. <laughs> well, that's all right. We'll do it in moderation, right? <laughs> Just take the show in moderation. So thanks so much for joining us. I'm Professor Ken. And I'm Professor Paul Marino. And, and this is the Forward Motion Business Show. We'll see you out there real soon. Thanks so much, everyone.